Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. Uh, last week I was a guest over on Scrapbook and Cards Today, which I'll link to here, and I shared a fun and simple card that is great for kids or for friends, just something that's happy, and I thought I'd share it here in case you missed it. It does. Um, it has some Copic coloring, but also a very simple window card design that could be used with a variety of products. So let's start with die cutting the window. I have this heart die from Simon Says Stamp. I have my magnetic platform that is in my Big Shot to hold this die in place as I run it through my die cut machine and I'm just cutting a window in the center of a piece of white cardstock that is cut slightly smaller than my note card. So I'm going to set that window aside and keep the positive heart space here and I am going to trace this onto a piece of white cardstock. This is Nina white cardstock which is Copic marker friendly and I'm just tracing that with a pencil so that I know where to do my stamping. So I have my um, Sending Hedgehogs stamp set from Lawn Fawn. I just love this little miniature stamp set. And I am going to arrange my stamps on here. And then I kind of want to plan out where I'll have the sentiment going across the window. So i got to make sure that my little hedgehogs are high enough to allow room. Now I'm going to stamp these hedgehogs with my favorite things, Black Licorice Hybrid ink. This is a great Copic friendly ink. And I stamped it off onto scrap paper first, just since it's a new stamp. And then I stamped it into my heart. So I have both of them perfectly positioned now. And I'm just checking to make sure I like that sentiment going right underneath it. Okay, so now there is this tiny little heart that's in that stamp set too. I'm gonna to put this on the other side of my block and stamp this three times with that same black ink. So I, I'm just kind of using that pencil for the heart as a guide of what will show through the window that will add on top of this later. So I want to try to stay inside those pencil lines. Okay, so now it's time to add my Copic coloring. Now I'm going to kind of speed this up so it doesn't take too long. And I'm just sharing some tips for adding some shading, but you could keep it simple or go more elaborate if you want to. Now I wasn't really sure how to color a uh, hedgehog, so I searched on cartoon hedgehog, I actually spelled cartoon wrong, sorry about that. And what I do is I check out the images Google has for cartoon hedgehogs, and this helps me with figuring out how to color my little uh, hedgehogs here on my project. So I found that most of them were light on the bottom and the d darker on top, and that was just a little guide for me to get started. I'm going to go ahead and saturate both of my guys completely with my lightest brown ink. So just to kind of get the paper going and nice and saturated so the blending will be easier. Now I'm adding my medium brown color just around the edges and kind of towards the middle. And then my darkest brown only around the edges. So I'm going from light to medium to dark. Once I've put down all of my dark brown around the edges on this guy, I'm going to come in with my medium shade. So I'm only doing the top of my little hedgehogs right now. And back with my medium shade, I'm just blending the dark to the medium. And then I'm going to do a quick pass over that light area with my medium shade, just a little bit. And then I'm coming in with the light to kind of erase some of that, just to add some highlight. Okay, so now for his body, I just want a little bit of the medium shade for kind of some shadowing or some shading on him. So I just put a little bit down, and now I'm coming in with the light to kind of blend that out. I'm not using any of the dark on the bottom of the body. Now I am going to come in with my colorless blender and just do a little highlighting kind of on the, on the top of his face and then back with the light just to blend that out. The, the, co uh, the colorless blender kind of erases the color. Now I'm coming in with just a little bit of light red for his cheeks and then on the, for the little spines here I'm going to go ahead and use my darkest really light with a light brush to create little um, spines I guess you would call them um, all over his back and I'll do this on both sides. This just kind of helps to define that color and that texture. Now for the grass, I'm coming in using the chisel end of my Copic just to make it fast and putting a light green down then I'll come in with the brush tip to kind of work into those tight areas. So I'm really saturating this with the green. You, know, you can see that I keep adding more because the more you put down, the better it will blend. Next I'll come, or, come in with a slightly darker green and just put that underneath where their bodies are. And then I wanted the grass to be lighter towards the bottom tip of the heart, so I'm going to come in with my colorless blender and do a quick scribble through. And that just sli slightly softens and lightens that bottom part. It's a great way to kind of lighten an area you've colored too dark. Now for the sky, I'm coming in with BG11, which is one of my favorite colors of all time, really saturating around that. And you don't have to worry about staying inside the lines because we're going to cover up everything outside of the lines. 
Then I'm coming in with BG13, which is a little bit darker, and putting this around where my little hedgehogs are. Now I was having trouble getting this to blend. I came in with my light color again and was trying to blend it out, but it wasn't really blending very well. I could still see the scribbles from the darker blue color. So here's a trick that you can do. You can open your darker, darker color and touch the tip of your lighter to the tip of the darker, and you'll end up with a medium shade. So you'll see I'm touching the darker marker to the tip of my lighter, and you end up with a medium shade that you can go and blend, and it works really well, and it does not damage your markers at all. The Copic markers were intended to touch tip to tip like this. So that helped me blend that sky out. Now for a little shadow underneath these guys, I'm using a gray marker. Really, you could use any of the grays for this. It just adds a little bit of um, shadow underneath him, and it works with any color. Now I'm coming in with that gray again and doing like kind of little grass blades here. You could come in with a darker green, but to be honest with you, I just had the gray, so I grabbed it and it worked. And I put little blades of grass all over. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I just wanted to add a little bit of interest. And then I'm gonna go and reinforce the shadow underneath them with the gray again. Now this is a trick that I've learned from my friend Kathy Rakusen over at the Daily Marker blog. Um, she traces all of her Copic colored images with a fine black pen to give a nice defined edge and boy does it make it pop, especially when you're using a lot of bold colors like I did. Now that we've finished our coloring, it's time to work on the rest of the card. I decided I wanted some dry embossed dots on this white piece since it was so simple. So I'm lining it up with the dots inside of this embossing folder from Sizzix and I'll run it through my die cut machine. I think adding uh, dry embossing, uh, some kind of dry embossed embossing folder pattern to white cardstock really kind of makes a card pop and adds some great dimension. Now I'm using some foam tape on this. I kind of went a little overboard with that foam tape, but that's okay. You could use smaller squares if you wanted to, but I wanted to make sure that this popped up from the coloring that we do, we're going to add behind the window. So now I have a note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half, and I trimmed down my colored piece because I didn't really need that huge piece of white cardstock. And I, it's time to put this together. I'm first going to line up my coloring behind the heart window. This seemed to be the easiest way to do it. And then I'm going to add that piece onto my white note card. Very simple, and you can see how those dots really add a lot to the white. And I love the look of the white embossed piece against the white note card, that tone on tone look. Now for a little shimmer, I'm going to add a quick coat of Wink of Stella shimmer pen or glitter pen to uh, my little hedgehogs just to add a little sparkle. This is for a child and I thought the added sparkle would be extra fun. The last piece we need to add is a sentiment. I love the sending hedgehog sentiment, so I'm stamping it with Versamark ink onto a piece of dark pink cardstock that matches the hearts on the card adding some Hero Arts white embossing powder and heat setting it. I like to stamp, when I need a strip, I like to stamp up against the edge of a piece of cardstock. Then I take it to my trimmer and cut the other edge. And then I don't have to worry about getting my sentiment straight on there because I can just cut around it. Then I'm going to cut the ends off and then to create a V on the ends of both of these so that it can be like a banner. I'm going to do a little cut. Um, that's dead center on the edge. That's just a little shortcut. Then I will cut from the corner to the tip of that cut and that's a perfect way to cut a V. So I put a little cut down the center and then from the corner to the end of that cut. And there we have the quick edges to this. Just gives a nice finishing touch. To add that to the card, I have a piece of foam tape in the center and then I'm going to put regular adhesive on the ends. This way it fits nicely onto the dimension that we already have there. And I'll go ahead and add this to the card. Now since this sentiment is really standing out here, I want to make sure it's nice and straight, so I've got my T ruler to check that and make sure. And that's it, a super easy card, just using some favorite products I've been dying to use. Hopefully you can incorporate some products you may have into a similar design. If you are interested in the products that I use, there's a link below in my YouTube description uh, to multiple sources, or you can head over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com where I'll have much more information. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up so you, YouTube knows that you would like to see more. I'd really appreciate it, and I hope to see you back soon.